Hey everyone, today my CNET colleagues and I are showing off our favorite iPhone tips to make your iOS life easier and faster than ever before. So here they are, CNET's top iPhone tips. All right, fine, I'll go first. So you may or may not already know from your home screen of your iPhone, you can swipe down and access Spotlight. This is where you can easily search apps like Duncan comes up and I can quickly open it. It also shows you Siri suggestions of apps you've used recently. But as of this last update, you can also drag them from here and add them to your home screen. What you can also do is swipe down and you can hold down and you can also delete apps from here. But I haven't even gotten to the best part. You can access Spotlight from your lock screen. On your lock screen, just swipe down. There you go, there's Spotlight. And as long as Face ID got a hold of your face, it will unlock right to the app you choose. Easy peasy, there you go. Wow, I cannot believe I just shared the Spotlight with everyone. That's so unlike me. Your text cursor has a secret weapon called live text, which can use your phone's camera to capture text so you don't have to type it in. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's less of a weapon and more of a tool, and technically it's not a secret because I'm telling it to you right now, but if your iPhone is on iOS 15, anytime the keyboard is up and the cursor on screen, just tap to bring up the cursor menu. On it, you'll see the live text icon, which looks like photo corners with horizontal lines in the middle. When you select it, your keyboard is replaced with a live view from your camera. Point your phone at whatever you want to capture and hit the insert button to add the text to whatever you're typing. If there are more than one option for your camera to grab, simply tap on the screen, or if you wanna be a little more selective, tap the live text icon to select the exact text you want to add. And voila, you found a way to be more productive or lazy, which is basically the same thing when you, when you think about it. Who's got two thumbs and is really slow at texting? This guy. If you're in the same boat, then here's a shortcut to make it quick and easy to send a text. You wanna open your phone settings, go to general, then keyboard, then text replacement. This is where you'll be able to set custom phrases to appear when you type in a few letters, like on my way, or never mind, or be right back. Then when you go to send a text, you'll be able to type in those letters and your keyboard will auto-correct to the full phrase. That keyboard settings page also has a few other cool features. Tap on one-handed keyboard to move the keyboard placement over to your dominant hand. No more trying to swipe across the screen with your thumb. And if you're like me, you might want to turn off spell check and autocorrect because if my phone tries to autocorrect my spelling one more time, I'm gonna go ducking crazy. The wild world of augmented reality isn't here yet, but your phone is probably the best doorway. But how do you share that? One simple trick, screen capture. Put this on your control center. Here's how to do it. First, in your control center settings, you add the screen capture, little record, screen recording icon. When you do that, you can then swipe down and you can start that recording, then open the app or the thing that's got AR in it. And it just records in the background. When you're done, swipe back down, stop the recording. It saves to your camera roll. Then you open the camera roll and you edit and you trim it to just get to the right length. It's so easy to do and it's pretty cool to share stuff like that. And it's probably the best way to demo AR. Anyway, that's my little iPhone trick. The iPhone has this trick where you could hit the side buttons to call 911 without actually dialing 911. And if you have little kids who sometimes play with your phone, you will want to turn this feature off. Seriously, my kids have called 911 accidentally more than once. I give them my phone for a second to watch some cartoon and then there goes the warning blaring and I'm hurling myself over the couch to try to stop it, but it's too late. Hi, I'm so sorry, it was an accident. My kids had my iPhone. I didn't mean to call 911, everything's okay. You still have to come over? Okay, thank you. Pressing the power button quickly five times will trigger 911. It will also auto call if you hold down a volume button and the power button for a long time. To turn this off, go to settings, then go down to emergency SOS, turn off call with side button, and turn off auto call.
If you're running iOS 15 on your iPhone, you gotta check out one of my favorite features, drag and drop. Yeah, that's right. You can drag and drop things from one app to another, like web links, documents, videos, and photos. For example, if you're in the Photos app, just tap and hold on one of the photos you wanna share. And without letting go, drag it to the side of the screen, top or bottom. Then, if you wanna move multiple photos or videos, simply tap any other thumbnail and they're collected together. Next, still without letting go of that screen, use your other hand to go to the home screen and open the app you wanna move everything to. I'm gonna compose a new email message and add these photos and videos. And all I have to do is let it go, just like the song. Now, drag and drop is a nice option to use instead of the sharing menu to move in things in between apps. Plus, it's kind of like magic. I mean, kind of, a little bit, right? Did you know you can play a custom sound or song every time you plug your iPhone into charge? Here's how. Open the Shortcuts app or download it if you don't already have it, and then tap the Automations tab. Find Create Personal Automation, and then scroll all the way down until you find Charger. Tap into that, and make sure Is Connected is selected. Tap Next, and we're gonna find the Play Music Action. Now find the Music Word and tap onto that. I've already put a 10 second clip on my phone, but if you don't have music already on your phone, if you're an Apple Music subscriber, for example, you'll be able to browse any song or sound in the catalog and add that. So I'm just gonna go and add my song, press the plus icon, and then the arrow next to the song name. I'm gonna make sure that we're not shuffling and we are not repeating so I don't drive myself up the wall. Then I'm gonna tap next and make sure that ask before running is not selected. I'm gonna tap done, I'm gonna take a listen. Ah, the sweet sounds of custom charging music, which is kind of neat. One final tip if your friends leave you unattended with their phone for a period of time, I highly recommend choosing this particular song to play every time their phone is charged. I can't play it for copyright reasons, but you know exactly what's gonna happen. Oh Siri, I remember all the times we've had. Remember what you sounded like on the iPhone 4S? It's Thursday, October 13th, 2011. Let's check now. What is the weather like today? It's currently clear and 46 degrees. Well, you sound a little different, which is totally fine, but did you know that there are a bunch of different Siri voices available? It's true. Here's how you can change what Siri sounds like. Tap on your settings app, then go to Siri and search, tap that, then go into Siri voice. From there, you'll see a bunch of varieties and voices. Let's give a listen to the other voices. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. That sounds pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and that's my new Siri voice. What's the weather like today? It's currently clear and 46 degrees. Now here's a bonus tip. You can ask Siri to change Siri voice. Change Siri voice. I can't change my voice, but you can do it yourself in settings. So you'll get this message. You hit Siri voice settings and it'll take you right to the Siri and search pane. From there, go to Siri voice and then try it again. From shopping lists to emails, and even the script for this video, I know I'm constantly writing important things on my iPhone, and I'm sure you are too. So it's vital to have efficient ways to edit all that text. One classic way to do this is by tapping your iPhone screen to move your cursor to the part of your text you'd like to edit. But did you know you can also move your cursor with the space bar? Let me show you how to do it. Just hold down on the space bar, and once all the keys are grayed out, you can shift your finger on and around the keyboard to move your cursor and then you can quickly edit away. Trust me, this will make editing all the important things you write on your iPhone so much easier. Maybe you just got a brand new iPhone 13 or maybe you upgraded your old iPhone to iOS 15. Either way, you might have noticed something a little strange with Safari. The address bar is at the bottom of the screen. Now, if you're a one-handed iPhone user, this might come as a plus as it's easier to reach, but since 2007, that address bar has been at the top of the screen and takes a little getting used to. If you wanna move it back to the top, all you gotta do is hit the double A button and select show top address bar, and bam, you're back to the top. And interestingly enough, you wanna put it at the bottom, you just tap that double A button and tap show bottom tab bar, and bam, it's at the bottom. You can move it to the top, and the bottom, and the bottom, and the top, do whatever you want. It's your options. Let's talk the control center and how to customize it. 
To access the control center, just swipe from the top right corner on your iPhone, and there you go, at the bottom, there are a bunch of tools that you can use. And there may not be if you haven't set this up yet. On mine, there's the flashlight, there's a timer, there's an alarm, calculator, voice recorder, remote, etc. So in order to customize this, just go over to settings, then go to customize the control center. And then in here is where you have access to all of these tools. So as you can see, those on top are the ones that are in mine. And then on the bottom, there's even more. I can have dark mode. I can have music recognition using Shazam and a quick note, text size, etc. If I want to change the order, that's really easy. I can just swipe them up like this. And then you'll see when I swipe down, the calculator is now in the top left. It goes from the top left to the bottom right. So that is the control center. It is such a handy way to easily access different tools. Now for a tip that could be life-saving, showing emergency medical information on your iPhone lock screen and sharing medical data with first responders. To set this up, first you need to open the health app. Tap on your profile picture in the top right-hand corner, then select medical ID and then get started. Here, you can fill out any info that you want emergency responders to know, like medical conditions, allergies, medications, as well as your blood type, organ donor status, and emergency contacts. Once you've filled out your information, scroll to the bottom and switch on show when locked or share during emergency call, or both. If you select show when locked, this information will appear on the lock screen. To see what that looks like, cover your front facing camera to turn off face ID, then swipe up and press emergency. If you're in the US and you make a 911 call, you'll also get an option to share your medical information with first responders during the call. And here's a bonus tip, if you wanna make an SOS call, just hold down the power button and one of the volume buttons and then swipe across on emergency SOS. Notifications are one of the many annoyances we have to deal with on our phones. But thanks to iOS 15, Apple gave us a new tool called Notification Summary to help wrangle them in. Think of this like your own personalized newsletter filled with notifications that aren't urgent. Instead of being interrupted or distracted throughout the day, notifications are collected in the background from apps that I'm interested in, but that are not timely. Those notifications are then delivered to me as a sheet at a time I choose. To set this up, you go to settings, notifications, scheduled summary, and turn it on. Follow the prompts and select which apps you want to include and the times you want your summary delivered. It's straightforward to set up, but it might take you a little tweaking to get things just right. Notification summary can really change the relationship you have with your phone. You get along now. There you have it, CNET's top iPhone tips. If you found one helpful, be sure to give this video a like. And you know what? We couldn't fit every iPhone tip, so if you have one that we didn't cover, be sure to drop it down in the comments. As always, for more tips, how-tos, and tech reviews, keep it here by subscribing to the CNET channel.